I got a couple things on the RV cottage here that I have to fix again. Tiny house, prepper. Live simple, live free. Hey everybody, I'm Bill with Tiny House Prepper and I got two things on this cottage that I need to fix both of you, both of them, something that you're sort of aware of. First of all, in a video a few weeks ago when we were on our way to Watkins Glen, New York uh, State Park, we were parked in a Walmart and one of the stabilizers broke. Well, <laughs> I didn't tell you on the video, but the next day when we got to Watkins Glen and started setting up camp, another one of the stabilizers broke in the same way. So that whole uh, five days that we were there, we didn't have two stabilizers and it was a lot more shaky than usual. When I got home, I took the stabilizers down to the uh, local RV repair shop and he took care of it for me. Let me show you what the situation was. So here was the situation. When I put the drill on here to try to turn that and bring the stabilizer up, instead of that coming up, this bolt that runs through here came out that way. And I determined that it was because there's a little uh, ring here, a retainer ring that's supposed to keep it from going out. And I thought that there was a weld that was broken there, a little spot weld or something. Well, I couldn't really see it because this is so dirty, but there was actually, you see this pin. There was actually a pin there that had sheared off. And then the same thing happened the very next day on, the, on another one. I couldn't believe it happened two days in a row. But... Uh, so I went down to the uh, RV repair shop and he just drilled the old pin out and put a new one in and this one is hardened steel so it should last for quite a long time. Now several people in that other video said that they were really cheap and they should be the whole stabilizer should be replaced but this was original equipment equipment and this is an 05 so this is nine this is I'm sorry 14 years old. So those little retainer pins lasted for 14 years, so I'm not really worried about it. So I got these two pins replaced for just a couple bucks, and then I'll be able to bolt them back onto the trailer. Nice, easy fix. I'll finish with that one. Now I can go do the other one. Okay, so now I got both of the stabilizers replaced and that wasn't really all that difficult. Now I do have two other stabilizers that are now suspect. When are those pins gonna break? You know, because they're also 14 years old. But I'm just not gonna worry about it because stabilizers are not a critical uh, system for the trailer. We could still use the trailer without the stabilizers. Stabilizer just makes it a little bit more, you know, more stable and not shake as much when you're walking around in it. That's not big, that big a deal. So I'm just going to go with it, and if another one breaks in the future, I'll just deal with it when it comes. So now I've got the other repair that I have to make. This one you already know about because I just repaired it. Now i got to fix it again. Let me show you what I mean. And the other repair that I'm doing today is to fix my shore power uh, plug here again. <laughs> you might remember that I did this a few weeks ago because this is the old style of plug and all of the wire is pushed down inside of here and I had a problem because all of these fingers right in here were broken out. And I was afraid that once I pushed this back in there that I could lose the plug down inside. So I replaced this whole thing and I did a video about that. The problem is there was a, a cover that came down and snapped in place to make it watertight while you're driving down the road 
it had just a tiny little plastic nub that stuck into here and that was the hinge. It was a cheap little thing. Second time I used it, that little plastic piece broke off, so now the, the, the door is gone. So now it's exposed to the weather. So I was talking to my RV repair guy at the shop and he said that all of the brands of this particular style are like that. They're all really cheap. So he recommended <clears throat> that I replace it with the newer style and I thought that was a great idea. The old one, all the wire goes inside. The new style, the wire is detachable and you just stick it on and, and screw it and lock it in place. And uh, it's really a much better system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Grief, I can't get this thing out of here. How did I get it in here? <laughs> there we go. Almost broke some of those out trying to get it out. Now this wire, I don't know, it's 15 feet long at least, maybe 20. Now this is the fitting that needs to go in there and then the uh, plug will then plug into that for the cord. I've pulled this cord all the way out and I need to cut it right in here make sure that I leave enough room to do the wiring here and then I'll push the excess back inside. Now <clears throat> these are the only wire cutters I have and they're way too big for that cable. So what I'm going to have to do is strip off the insulation with a knife so I can get in there and cut each wire individually. Now I've got the wires exposed so I can come in here with my wire cutters and cut each one individually. Alright, there's a gauge right here that lets you know how much wire to strip back. About that much. These wire cutters that I have are not really heavy duty enough for this big this big cable, this big wire. All right, that was a little more difficult than it should have been because I was using wire strippers that were way too small for the job, but I got it done. <clears throat> now this goes against the wall like that 
and just like before they gave me this gasket to put behind there but because this isn't flat like it would like it is down here it's contoured this gasket isn't really going to work so I'm going to have to use some silicone sealer like I did before Okay, one thing out of the way. It's a good seal with the silicone all the way around. Now this is the back of the box and there's a, a wire clamp right here. I gotta loosen it up so the wire will fit through it. So I got this clamp off and that's the actually the electrical box that that goes into. So I'll put that on. Get it out of the way. <clears throat> and then here, you just put the uh, wire into the holes and then there's set screws. And it's marked black, white, and green. So just put it in the hole and then tighten up the set screw. I forgot the gasket. <laughs> yeah, there's the gasket that goes on. Okay, so now I got all three of the wires installed and the set screws tightened in. So you can see what it looks like here, the green around that ring and the white around that ring tells me which ones to put it into. And they're all in and they're all tight. So now I gotta bring this electrical box down there's little tabs right in there for it to go into then I put the clamp back on it's a wire clamp that keeps it from getting from the wires from pulling out So that clamps the wires into, into place so they're not going to go anywhere. Now I put the gasket there and then just screw it right into place. Okay, so this side is done. 
Now I need to put the other end. This is the cable that I cut off. <clears throat> it's got this plug on the far side to plug into the panel. So I gotta put this. This is what plugs in there. I gotta put this on that end right there. Now I have a 30 amp service here, so I don't know if this will focus, but you can see this is a 30 amp plug. And to get the wire to be able to go inside of there, you got to take it apart. And you do that by taking out these three screws right here. All right, so I got the screws out. Now you can see on the back, right in here where you put the wires in those holes, and just like that, one there, then you use the set screws to, to uh, hold them in place. Alright, so now I got this hole cut a little bit larger, so what I'm going to do is just push this through and get it out of the way. push it back here out of the way so that I can put my connector on here. Okay so I've got this pushed on there and then this will go, there's a rubber seal right there make it watertight. Push that on there then I gotta make the connection with these These are all marked white, black, and green so you know which ones to put them in. So those are all tight. Now I push this back on. There's a little tab right there. Make sure you get it on correctly. And then the screws go back in. Alright, so I got all those there, and then there's two wires here that's a set screw for a cable clamp that's right inside there to keep the cable from pulling out. So I got to tighten those up. So now that's nice and tight, that's not going anywhere. It won't pull off of there. Now I slide this up, and uh, doesn't look like there's any kind of set screw or anything in here. I guess I just push it on. Oh, and there we go. So let's, let's see now how this works. Make sure the plugs line up. There we go. So now I've got all of this cable with this at the end. And then when you're leaving, you just disconnect it completely and it's watertight. So I hope, I hope that's been helpful. If you ever need to replace the plug for your shore power, especially if you have the old style like I had, this one is really much better. And uh, that's how you do it. So this is the electrical fitting that I used. It's a Park Pot Power by Marinco. And I got this at my local RV repair shop. This was about 120 bucks, which really surprised me. But, and I may have been able to find it cheaper if I had gone online. 
but I didn't want to wait, you know, for a week for it to be delivered. I just needed to get this done, so this is what I bought. But uh, it worked well. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Live simple, live free. We'll see you next time. Be blessed.